Schooltech Hurley's the only GA approved synthetic Hurley on the market are now proud sponsors of the Backdoor GAA Club Hurling Championship Show. Cooltech Hurleys come in sizes from size 24 right up to size 36, with colour options available from size 24 up to size 32. Buy online at www.cooltech.ie. Here for another week of Club Hurling Championship talk. Probably drama and probably one of your toughest days, I'd say, to be a commentator, Stephen. Keep an eye on everything um, that just happened in that game. A phenomenal game, really, between Ockmore, Castellani and Killedangan. Absolutely, Paul. It was amazing, you know. I mean, it was just end-to-end -end and the scores. There were some breathtaking scores in it, really. And uh, it was great having Sarah Friday alongside me. She's part of the Tip FM team now. And, you know, we needed a, a good team across the way for it because uh, there was a lot of matches this year. We had uh, the streaming service in Tipperary, so Tip FM were involved in that. So we had, uh, you know, Ken Hogan, Dennis Kelly, former Tommy Barra manager, Shane Stapleton as well uh, from Golden, who would have county finals before and was involved with the footballers as well. John Sheedy, brother of uh, Lee Sheedy and Johnny heard with Tip and uh, Sarah, who is a camogie player just coming back from an injury. And uh, I was on duty with Sarah yesterday for the game and it was just phenomenal. You know, it was just score for score, three goals from Lockmore. And all of a sudden you felt this is you know, something that hadn't hit Kiladangan in this year. It's always them getting the goals, but this time around, they were conceding them. And, like, in fairness to them, they came back into the game before half time. And coming up then in the second half, Lockmore were pushing ahead, Kiladangan would come back, and it was just over and back all the time. And then, you know, a fantastic score from out in the sideline. Um, Noel McGrath was just brilliant all day. And, we were set for extra time, so take extra time then. Like, that was just amazing as well, really. And we thought we'd have penalties. Yeah, absolutely. Like, um, it was the way it was looking for long periods. Like, even just the start of the game, um, won 36 points there at the water break. It's end to end stuff. But then, when obviously, when um, like more Castellani hit the ground running, get their three goals. It's hard to know what you're going to expect then. You could, you were probably saying, geez, Lockmore Castellani could take off here and really build up a good lead, but just show the character within Kildang and like to be hit for three quick goals in the first half. Like many teams have collapsed, but that wasn't going to happen with them yesterday. No, they have a lot of experience built up. The last few years, they've really been getting closer and closer all, all the time. And this year, it had to be the year for them, really. It was their third time in the final. Sarsfields beat them. Then last year, they were beaten by Boris Lee, who went down to the Club All-Ireland. And Kiladangan kind of felt that last year they should have won it. And, like, they're a phenomenal club because if you go back 25 years, Paul, they were junior, you know, in Tipperary, right? So they were, they were a junior team and they made step-by-step step all the way up along to intermediate and all the way up to senior. And now they've been knocking on the door and finally 2020... To get over the line so when they're falling behind three goals from evan sweeney and you know that lockmore forward line all of a sudden it's like you know do they get do they fall asunder and it was testament to them that they were able to come back the two blends were brilliant for them and they were you know real leaders i thought in the field um paul i think it was seven six or seven he got from play so he was brilliant billy seymour exceptional from the freeze and they just kept getting score after score back into it. And they have a couple of good young players too, like Sean Hayes now is going to be a serious player for Tip probably in the years to come. And they have a lot of, you know, talent there that is just below the county level really in the last few years. Willie Connors pushing for a spot on the starting team with Tip. And they had all that power to, to bring into the game. So it was just, it was really fascinating. And like the ending, you know, <laughs> the ending was something else. Yeah, and then obviously Kildangan um, regroup two points down um, at half time. Um, but like, even if we're just looking towards 
normal time um Kiladango ahead but then the equalizer obviously for the point that Kiladango won ahead just a phenomenal point and then normal girls equalize you like it nearly make you think back to the inter-county games on a sunny Sunday like the quality that was played like yeah I think someone after the match said it was like uh Joe Canning against Tip in the semi-final in uh, 2017. Remember that point he got? I think it was the Cusick stand side. I was doing commentary that day as well. And that was heartbreaking from a Tip point of view that day, but brilliant for Galway. And it was, it was you know, similar to that. It was the same kind of angle, the same type of uh, ball that had to be sent in. And, like, you really thought... I thought Lockmore's name was going to be on the cup simply because of the relentlessness that they've shown the last few weeks, getting to the football final, getting to the Hurling final, and taking it all in their stride. And I think that point from Noel was just testament to that. They don't panic. You know, they're so calm under pressure. They're so steady. And, like, who else would you want taking a free like that? Only Noel McGrath, like, you know. And, like, it was, it was brilliant. And it was just deserves to have extra time anyway. If it had ended like that, it, uh, it would have been cruel. And uh, I was glad that extra time happened. Yeah, and then we go on to extra time. Um, Lockmore Castellani outscored him three points to two. Um, and then straight from the puck out, um, a, a super goal really from uh, Malachley. Um, it gets taken off from the 44th minute, comes on and gets the winning goal. But like, before we touch with the referee drama, just what an absolute finish when you actually look back at the finish of the goal. Yeah, um, like it was just point for point, and then all of a sudden, John McGrath, and John McGrath pointed that 65, and straight down the feed, within seconds, uh, Joe Gallagher caught the ball, and I interviewed Joe Gallagher after the match, you know, and he said, I, w- I was on the field to do that, he said. He said, uh, I didn't have the best hour plus, whatever it was, but uh, he said, at least I caught that ball. Laid that one out. And McLaughlin, you know, the, he had a first touch just bringing it in under Hurley, just controlled it into his hand. And to go for a goal like that is unreal. Because, I mean, everyone there probably thought he's going to take a point and we're heading for penalties. But he had goal on his mind and he blasted it past David Kennedy. And David Kennedy, you know, is a, is, has proven himself a very reliable keeper the last couple of years there for Lockmore but uh, had to go full length and you know it was a brilliant finish and it's a worthy way for them to win a county final if you're looking at it from a, a Kiladangan perspective without a doubt. And what did you make of the drama like of the game probably could have been finished? I thought it was really harsh on Lockmore to be honest um, like when John McGrath hit that point I only watched it back this morning and uh, the puck out was taken, and uh, Barry Hogan's puck out was probably sailing roughly around midfield, I'd say, and was starting to drop down when the referee blew the whistle for the puck out. So, like, I mean, that that just shouldn't happen, really, in a county final, because you have players around, anyone who has played in a big match like that, that if you hear a whistle, you're told, concentrate all the time. But when you hear a whistle, automatically you kind of, relax a little and you probably relax a little naturally after conce- after scoring as well and thinking you're happy, you know, and they probably thought they were home and dry and they, they might have thought this is the full-time whistle, this is, um, you know, being called back for another puck out, but either way, that whistle went and that whistle was pointless and the ball was caught and fed to the unmarked player really at that stage and Lockmore hadn't left a player unmarked up until then. So you'd have to wonder about that, really. So it was a, a serious controversy when you think about it, that the puck out had been taken and the whistle went as the ball was dropping. So I think it's really tough on Lockmore. And uh, I think nobody had time to react at the time because like Lockmore's instant thing is we need to get a score back. But I think when they reflect or when others reflect, they'll realise that... Uh, it, it was serious controversy, really. And like that decision, you either blow the whistle and take the puck out or you wait and you call it back. And the play wasn't called back, even though the whistle was blown. It was ignored by the referee and by the players on the field as well. 
Yeah, and obviously it's huge life for Kildare in um, the first county title. I suppose you just hope that it doesn't affect Lockmore um, mentally too much now preparing for a football final. Yeah, everybody is saying it's going to knock them out. I don't think it will. I think they'll bounce back. They're the sort of characters that they just, you know, dust themselves off and go again. And uh, every time with Lockmore that I've seen them play anyway, they always just take this game as the most important game. So I think it's going to be, today is probably a really cruel day for them if they start thinking about it and dwelling on it. And they have to build themselves up and get ready to go again. They're up against Clamwell Commercials next week. Ferocious team led by Charlie McGeever, part of the Tipperary senior football backroom team. Um, also manager before or was well involved with Finn Harps and you know has a lot of connections with soccer teams in England as well. And Charlie's very clever, excellent manager. But Lockmore should have beaten his side last year in Borlahan in uh, in the lead up to the county final. And it took a last minute fist over the bar from Seamus Kennedy to Prairie Hurler for Clamell Commercials to get a draw to send the game that sent the game to extra time and commercials barely won it in extra time. So I think it's going to be a brilliant football final and uh, I think every parish in Tipperary apart from Clamell will be roaring on Lockmore next Sunday. And uh, just briefly I don't know if you did Kildangan Man's interview after the game. Um, he was saying that they were getting Dari and prepared um, for the penalties. But, like, what was Dara Egan's influence, do you feel, really, with this Kildangan team? Because you could even see him on the line there being heavily involved. Oh, that's huge. Dara Egan, uh, yeah, I interviewed. Um the manager as well, Brian Lawler, for Tip FM afterwards, and he his point was that uh, Dara was being warmed up. Dara is a seriously good puck of a ball, so Dara was being warmed up to take a penalty, but then they weren't sure if they could just bring him on for that during the penalty shootout. So there was a hold up with that, and uh, like I think that's really his influence is so big because. A, he's involved with Tipperary at the moment, so he brings an awful lot that Liam Sheedy is doing, and he puts that into the Kiladangan setup. Uh, I interviewed Dara before, was it the quarter final or the semi final? And he said to me, his role is sub keeper, and that, that is his role. But I think he brings way more than that, and like he just has an influence and a way about him that really encourages players in a really positive way. And more than that, even as well, is he's teaching up there. So he's a teacher in Kiladangan in the school. A lot of those young players that were playing yesterday, he would have taught them in primary school. And if you were to ask the likes of Decky McGrath, wing back, or you were to ask like uh, the Flins, who's their biggest influence, they'll tell you it's Dara Egan. And when Dara Egan went into that school, they started playing hurling, hurling, and more hurling. And all of a sudden, they've gone through the ranks. So I think his influence is, you know, immeasurable and it's huge on that Kiladangan setup and it showed really that um, when they're winning like that again he's the he's the player people are even talking about straight after the match do you know um, so so keeper or not I think he had a huge influence in the backroom team and if you were to go longer than this year I would say the huge influence teaching those kids at school and putting hurling in their heads and you can kind of see that rise with Kiladangan from a junior club to an intermediate club to a senior club, and Dara would have been the goalie before Barry Hogan. So a huge part to play in it all. And he's probably, you know, the best known person up there, apart from Shane McGowan, who uh, is uh, a native of Kiladangan and Puck on up there. So uh, Shane McGowan and Dara Egan are probably their two best known people, I'd say. Yeah, and just looking at some of the talent on display yesterday, um, Lockmore Castellani, Brian McGrath, hugely impressive. Billy Seymour uh, hitting eight points. Paul Flynn, seven points. Is there any here you feel who could make the breakthrough onto the tip team this year from yesterday's county final? Um, there's a couple of players actually. Yeah, I think the full back, James Quigley, now is one that I think is absolutely brilliant. And he did a great job before Mark and Shamey Callanan. And he was in tight on Shamey. Now, Shamey is brilliant and he gets a goal from nothing, which he did. But, like, 
I think Quigley was absolutely huge this year uh, in that game against against Callanan when they played Drum, and again yesterday. I think he had a huge say in the match yesterday, just thwarting that full forward line from uh, Lockmore. So I would say Quigley is one that could make a breakthrough. Um, another one that I would have in my head that is uh, probably the best player in Tipperary is John Mayer. And I think I've been saying it for two, three months to people in Tipperary that um, like this guy is the best hurler in Tip. Uh, he was phenomenal for years. And as an underage player for Tipperary, he was a brilliant footballer, part of the successful Tipperary minor football team years ago, uh, 2011. And he was part of teams up along, but he just was plagued with injuries. So he had an awful lot of serious injuries and injuries that were kind of hard to diagnose. And that set him back a long ways. But I would say John Mayer is one that Lee Mashidi surely would be calling because with this year's championship the way it is, to me, he was the standout player in club hurling in Tipperary and he's probably the best footballer as well. So that's when going with. Yeah, and then just before we move on to get you to pick your club team in the championship, um, Owen Kelly scoring 2 5 from Mullahone, getting him back to senior A, um, absolutely massive. Like, and it's just unbelievable what the man can still do at his age. I think it was in 2005, um, he got them up, they won the senior, I think, if I'm not wrong there, but um, to score 2 5 at the weekend, it's just incredible. Oh, definitely. I mean, uh, back in 2002, Mullen Hone came from, you know, relative, uh, a low level, you know, similar to Killadangan, I guess. And they had uh, John Lahey there and Owen Kelly. And Owen Kelly just had a huge influence on Mullen Hone. He was a young player back then, just after winning an All-Ireland with Tip in 2001. And, you know, he stepped up to the mark there and we all know what he did after that. Brilliant goals against Cork in the Munster Championship. 2010, he captained Tipperary in the All-Ireland. Um, I have a book coming out called Game of My Life and he's one of the players that features in it. And the standout game for him was that All-Ireland final with Tipperary in 2010. So he was absolutely brilliant that day, captain to Tipperary. And, you know, he's always been one of the star players, had a lot of problems with his back and stuff like that, but never stopped him. Everyone in town will just tell you, he's a magician, you know, his nickname is God. And uh, he is just, you know, a phenomenal player. And at the age he is now, he's, uh, I don't know, late 30s, perhaps early 40s now. Uh, and he's uh, scoring 2-5 in what is effectively the senior B final in Tipperary, the Oreen Cup. And, like, I just saw the, the goal he got and I was listening as well and to the lads doing it on Tip FM as well. And, like, he just turned and fired it into the net. And it's the same goal he's been scoring since he was, like, 18, 19, 20. And, like, you know, class is permanent, you know. And Owen Kelly is just brilliant. And he's probably, you know, most people's favourite hurler, I think, of the last... Um, 30, 40 years since the time of Pat Fox, I think in Tipperary, everyone else would just say, "Oh, Owen Kelly, I love Owen Kelly." And watching him play hurling is just brilliant. And two five, superb. Uh, the other that game really, they were just that bit stronger and that bit more experienced. And fair play to Mullen uh Laura, that were up against him, probably a bit reliant on Bonner Mayer. Uh, the Tipperary goalkeeper is part of that team as well, Brian Hogan, but he plays out the field for them. So he was, you know, effectively just out and around the half back line or thereabouts. And uh, they've got a McIntyre as well, who's very good. John McIntyre then is the manager who, of course, is a former Kobe manager. But, you know, I mean, the day was owned by Owen Kelly. And, like, Owen Kelly, oh, wow. I mean, that's really what a catchphrase in Tipperary when people are at a match and they see him play. And it's just like that. 2-5 again. He was brilliant. Lit up Simple Stadium once more. And uh, all hail on Kelly. <laughs> Probably the toughest job now we had to, uh, well after the weekend of action was to pick a tip senior hurling team at the championship because like even looking at it from a Galway perspective 
you were thinking Barca to go all the way after doing two in a row. Such a young team, um, really bringing it to Ballyhale. Looked like Taylor Lasarsi is back after hammering, hammering Lockmore Castellani. Then Nina come along, like just an unbelievable championship. Oh man, it's been it's been phenomenal and game on game and like I think the first round was in good weather, second round as well, third round probably greasy conditions, but generally the pitch has been very solid and the ball has been hopping off Simple Stadium side. So here the championship, I would say John Mayer of Lockmore, uh Jake Morris of Nina as well will be close to, to the Colin Mark for it as well. Um, but when you asked me to pick a team, I was trying to go through it and rack my brain with it. Um, so just the one I've come up with anyway, Owen Collins of Drum and Inch as uh, the goalkeeper. James Woodlock, who does analysis with Tip FM as well, he's the manager there. And he was telling me that himself and uh, Damien Young, another former Tip goalie, work really hard with him to just get his game up to the top level. Uh, he's played with our ladies, Tip more in schools, all Ireland's and you know, this guy is going to be a player of the future. So I thought he had a brilliant campaign in the matches I saw him playing. Against Boris Ali, he was unreal, saving penalties from Brendan Mayer. Uh, you know, he was just top-notch. Puckouts were excellent, uh, really tuned in all the time and great at saving, you know, saving his team on a lot of occasions in the championship, particularly against Boris Ali. So Owen Collins, a very young keeper, about 20, 21, from Jerome, I'm giving him the number one jersey. Uh, two, Lock and Egan, man marker from Lockmore. Had a great battle with, uh, I think it was Jake Morris the last time against Nina, and an unknown player as well, but really stepped up to the mark and, you know, was superb. So uh, he's a tight, tidy marker there and kept whoever he was on quiet yesterday. Kiladangan were moving players around a bit. Uh, but whoever he was on, they got very little off Lock and Egan. So putting him in there as well. And uh, James Quigley at fullback from Killadangan. So Lock and Egan is Lockmore. James Quigley from Killadangan. And um, I'd have to say with him, like he's just, he's one that's definitely on Liam Sheedy's radar. We haven't uh, heard of him much, I'd say, up until maybe last year. And then he started coming up with really strong performances for Killadangan this year. He really just stepped up another gear and he's been excellent all through the championship. He's probably one that's on the fringes of the tip team and maybe there if they're short a player, he'll go in and fill in for a match. And uh, I would say that he could very easily get close to a starting place for Tipperary after his performances in this championship if Liam Sheedy is basing his team on this championship. Perhaps he'll stick with what he had before, but James Quigley is a name that he's sure to have been looking at for the last uh, six weeks or eight weeks there. So quickly at fullback. Um, the other cornerback position, Keith Ryan, who played more out the field for Upper Church Drum Band. But I'm going to fit him in there at uh, cornerback. So this is a young player on the Tipperary under 20s. And uh, he had a couple of superb games, was top class against uh, Tommy Vara in particular in Simple Stadium. Picked up a nasty facial injury in the game. And uh, had to go off the field. He, he couldn't really see the ball because it had just swollen around his eye. But he came back on, you know, and he, he played as much as he could in the match. But he had a brilliant championship. Really good touch, fast, bursting out with the ball. More a wing back than a corner back. But I'm going to fit him into my team because I think he's definitely a player of the future. So Keith Ryan of Upchurch from Ben gets that position there. Um, wing back then. Um, I'd have to go Jack Delaney, Tommy Vara, probably more a midfielder, but he's operating around a half back line, floating back there and up towards midfield. So uh, he is very good this year. Far Toom did very well against Kiladangan, did very well against Upper Church and was slotting over pints from way out the field. You know, he's able to defend and he's able to come out with the ball, work it up the field and attack. And I think he's a player we're going to hear more about. So Jack Delaney of Tommy Vara, centre back. John Mayer, Paul, um, what do you, you saw him playing? What do you think of him yesterday yourself? Yeah, just unreal. Like, um, you, you, I mainly know him towards the football, but just, just a bear man, really, and a, a serious early. Yeah, yeah, I had to go with him. Um, he's my player at the championship. I thought he was brilliant. The driving force for Lockmore himself there, 
John McGrath up top and Noel in around the middle of the field. That got him to a county final. So John Mayer, I mean, he was hitting ball left, right and centre against Killadang and he was the best player. Had they won yesterday, he was going to get man of the match and uh, he's my player of the tournament anyway in the tip championship. So I have him there, Paddy, the other wing, Paddy Mayer, you know, brilliant as ever. And like Paddy, he's just playing the same game year in, year out, catch that ball, drive forward, drive it over the bar, or drive it into the forwards. And, you know, no on the ground, no bother to him at all. Seriously strong, seriously powerful. And uh, I was talking to him at the weekend and he's really raring to go again for another inter-county championship uh, when it gets going in October, November. So, body Mar for me there. Another one who's in my book game of my life. He picked the 2016 All-Ireland Final against uh, Kilkenny as the standout game for him. And, uh, like, I'm just a huge fan of Paddy Mar. I think he is to this generation what, as a defender, what Owen Kelly was for a previous generation in tip. So, uh, Paddy Mar gets the nod there at number seven. Midfield, uh, again, you could probably s switch him with the wing back there, Jack Delaney, Brendan Mar. So, Brendan... Phenomenal again for Boris Lee as always and uh, didn't get to the heights he did last year with Boris Lee obviously but uh, on the field he was still as influential as ever driving forward, gathering ball, laying it off. Probably went a bit more deep for him this year and so putting him there and uh, Dan McCormick alongside him. Dan was brilliant for Boris this year and really just uh, dragged him through as far as that drum game and like in particular, he was excellent against Upper Church. He was hitting ball left, right, and centre. And Toom as well, same thing. He's well able to win a free. He's well able to get the ball. Reading of the game is exceptional. Hanging around the half back line and going forward. So I'm going with um, Dan McCormick there. So near, I'm at the halfway mark. What do you think of that so far? Yeah, all good. Um, it's 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 a tough job to do, all right, because it's, as we've just been saying, like it's it's been probably. Probably has been so far. If you're looking at one county that has the best championship, I'd have to say it has to be Tip, really. All right, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, the half-forward line. Uh, to get going with this, um, I'm going to start with the centre-forward because he's kind of a midfielder and he can slot in and eat a wing. Cahill Barrett, believe it or not. So, played cornerback with uh, Tipperary. And, you know, as one all-stars there, but up the field for Holy Cross. He, operating in and around midfield and a half-forward line. And he was like their top score getter for a lot of the year. And was hitting over point after point in this year's championship. And, like, like he's actually an option for Tipperary much further out the field. And he's probably been in corner back because, you know, he's been, you know, he's the best in the country there. But I think if he's out the field, he could be the best in the country out the field as well. Jeez. Yeah, so, so I'll go with Kyle Barrett there. Uh, Billy Seymour at 12. Uh, Billy Seymour, just brilliant for Killadang and, and like really reliable most of the time on freeze. Slotted over a lot yesterday in the county final. You know, excellent against Drum as well in the matches I saw him playing. So I'll go with Billy Seymour there. Um, the other wing forward spot, number 10. Again, I'm finding a lot of the play at the moment between the half-back line, midfield, and half-forward line is linked. So I had Jack Delaney at five, Brendan Merritt at eight, and I'm putting Brian McGrath in at ten. Now, you could swap them around. You could put Brian McGrath uh, at the back, and you could put Brendan wing forward, and there would be very little difference on the field because the backs are tracking forward, and the forwards are tracking back a lot. So... Um, so Brian McGrath, he's a younger brother of John and Noel. And, of course, he's on the Tipperary panel as well. He's probably a year or two off making a breakthrough in most people's eyes. But uh, he was an exceptionally good minor for Tipperary. Captained him in uh, 2016 to the All-Ireland. And he also was brilliant for our ladies' secondary school, Temple Moor, when they won the Munster and All-Ireland titles, the Harty Cup and the Crow Cup there a couple of years ago alongside Paddy Cadell. So Brian McGrath, I think, has to be on my team after the performances that he's put in this year. So I'm putting him in there. 13, um, I'm going to slot in his older brother, John McGrath. So John was just brilliant for Lockmore across the year. 
everything he did was up and down the field. He's been, you know, out around the middle of the field, scoring points, coming back to his half back line to take frees. John McGrath, just outstanding. And uh, Tipper, very lucky to have a player of his calibre. Um, that's, you know, early 20s, coming into his prime, really. So I think John McGrath is going to have a huge few years coming up for Tipperary. And he's definitely going to be on my team in the championship. Um, nearly there. What do you think? Would you would you um, be happy with him in your full forward line? Yeah, just the uh, only thing is, um, well, unless you're going to put him in now, uh, just Noel McGrath, I thought he would have been chewing. Yeah, 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 that's true, actually. Noel is another dash. Uh, you're right, I could have fitted him in as well there. Um, uh, if I'm taking out one, I'd probably take out one of the Boris Lee lads for Noel, I'd say. And uh, so I have Brian McGrath and I have John McGrath. And I'm uh, I'm torn between... Yeah, I have him down here and I have Paul Flynn, Jake Morris down here as well. So I have two of those three to pick from. Um, I probably should have picked Noel out the field, but uh, you caught me on the hop organising this team and <laughs> he'd probably be a first in really looking at it again. But uh, So I'm going with Paul Flynn, is who I had penciled in after his county final display yesterday. Captain Killadangan, you know, outstanding, brilliant stuff. So I have him there. Uh, Jake Morris then as well. And Jake Morris, you know, like, ah, oh, he was brilliant. He just lit up the game against Turles in the first half. Couple of early goals, and there were brilliant strikes straight into the far left corner. And uh, he has to be on it as well. So, look, the 16 man has to be Noel McGrath. And I can't believe I don't have him there because he's, you know, phenomenal as well. John Maher himself and... Uh, uh, John McGrath as well, those three. So John Mayer, John McGrath and Noel have to be in there. So look, I'll, I'll have to drop Brian, I think, and bring in Noel there in the half forward line. <laughs> um, so just moving to Limerick and the county final, I suppose, not much really to talk about. It's just an appear to be slaughtered doing really 527 to 112. Um, Richie English and Darrow Donovan, uh, out your injury for doing kind of caught up with the ends. You could see that they just didn't have the depth. The pace he probably had, but Peter Casey, unbelievable, two four. William Hen eight points. David Dempsey two two. Adrian Breen one three. Ronan Lynch four points. Connor Boylan two points. Tommy Grimes two points, and James O'Brien um, two points as well. Um, just unbelievable stuff from the Piercy. Declan Fanning obviously involved with them, and a huge victory really for the Piercy. Just showed all their quality, like because. After they lost the first day out to Kilmallock, as William O'Donoghue said, people questioned their hunger. But I'd say, I'd say when it comes to later on in the week, they're going to be disappointed there's no other in the championship because that performance, they looked like they'd definitely be looking towards another all Ireland anyways. Yeah, that's the, that's the killer for the teams now, really. And uh, I'd say the GA are probably kind of wondering why they didn't have an all Ireland club championship. Because, I mean, you look at the quality there. That side is just fantastic. And you go to Waterford, you have Bally Gunner. You know, I mean, how many titles have they won in a row now? And they're really dominating. It's probably not good for Waterford Hurling that they're dominating so much. But they would love another crack at Munster and in All-Ireland. You have Bally Hale, you know, uh, Dun Lai, up the north. Like, they're a super team as well. So I think it's a pity that we're we're not going to have provincial championships. I'd love to see a Munster championship and see how Kildangan would get on their first year as county champions. Um, but as regards that Limerick final, oh, brilliant victory! You know, I mean, they've really bounced back. Patrick's well looked to be the team um, after the way they did so before, and then you had Dune. With Dune, just probably never caught light in it. They had to start well and they had to really get a couple of goals and keep the scoring boots off. But when you're saying Dempsey hitting 2-2 and the names you rattled off there are all exceptional players. And it's great for Declan Fanning as well um, to be there as a coach. He's coached tip to the All-Ireland in 2016 and he went up to Napiershig, um last year with Michael Ryan, um, the former Tipperary All-Ireland winning manager. And he went in as coach with Michael Ryan up there. And Michael just did the one year there, but Declan stayed on and built on it. And the coaching that you're seeing now, I think, is a testament to how well they've been playing 
for the last trial and the last few months. Declan has proven himself an absolutely brilliant coach. And he's still lining out, of course, with Kill and All and was playing in the Oreen Cup, the senior B competition. So he was actually playing there in uh, in that recently enough as well. And I was trying to record him one night for that. And uh, he, he won't mind me saying this, but he was going training. So he had training in Limerick and then I was to record him afterwards. So it was like, you know, late, maybe 10, half, 10, 11 or thereabouts. And it was um, like, it's just the heart he has, you know, and the time he gives to the game. And, He's thinking about, about the game all the time. And Fanning is, is a super coach. And in all likelihood, a, a future Tipperary senior hurling manager, I think. And like he's still a really good club man as well. He played junior B football with his club, you know, playing senior hurling, playing junior hurling, you know, have boots and a hurley and a helmet. He will play. And uh, I'm delighted for him to coach in a peer sheet. And I think that they are a serious team and they would love a, a chance at Munster and, and All-Ireland. But look, I suppose we're probably, we should be delighted that we got county finals played in all the counties. Um, but at the same time, you would love to see another three or four weekends just dedicated to finishing that championship out. And the joy that that brought to the people of Boris Lee last year to play in a county final against Ballyhale and you know, brought back all the memories of the they had in nineteen eighty seven when they played Rat Noor in uh, the All Ireland finals that time. And like it's just it just it's brilliant for a parish. And I think it what the magic of the county championship could continue to Munster and in All Ireland with just that window of opportunity. And that time is there now. You know, wouldn't you love to see Bally Gunner playing against uh Napiershig next Sunday? I mean, and like it's a pity it's not going ahead. But um, as it is, they're going. They're all going to finish like champions, really. I suppose. Absolutely, but yeah, um, it, it is a real pity, like you were saying. But yeah, some some unreal hurling there in Tiffy Limerick. But uh, that's all on um, part one of the backdoor hurling show. And um, thanks a million for your time, Stephen. Please. On part two of the backdoor hurling show, we have the club hurling championship show. Delighted to be joined by Oisin Langan from um, Dubs TV. I suppose, Oisin, just looking back at the hurling final last year, uh, yesterday between Kula and Valley Bowden, um, seemed to be a real thriller. Yeah, it was a very good match. Uh, Kula proving worthy champions yet again. Um, they've dominated Dublin in the last couple of years. This is now their second title in a row, but they stormed to it in the end, about 10 to 15 minutes from the end, they really took over. Probably helped that Conal Keeney was sent off for Bally Bowden. I didn't see what the second yellow card he picked up um, was for. Um, and um, they lost Simon Lambert as well, which was a huge, huge loss for uh, Bally Bowden. And they, they brought on a couple of subs, brought on a couple of players, but they just didn't quite make the impact. It was tough on the likes of Conor McCormick, who actually came back this year. And he was one of the players we've talked about clubs maybe benefiting from COVID in some weird way, uh, despite the fact that it's been a very negative time in just general society sense. But he was in London and he came back and he was convinced by one or two of the other players who were in the Bally Bowden squad to actually give the season to Bally Bowden and work from home in Dublin rather than working from home in London. But uh, unfortunately for him, didn't come away with the medal, didn't come away having had a good season though. And, um, you know, and look sharp for a guy who didn't train with the team for uh, the massive block that you would need to get up to the, the speed of senior hurling. But look, ba Bally Bowden gave it everything. There was a time where it looked like maybe they'd come out on top of Kula, powered home, as they did in the semi final, and um, very much deserving winners. And, you know, David Tracy was excellent, nailed his freeze, scored a few from play. Um, Conor Callahan distracted at times, didn't do a whole pile in a scoring sense, but worked incredibly hard. And Sean Moran got an absolute driller of a goal from play and then scored an excellent penalty. Um, but yeah, it was, a, it, was, it was a good contest. The scoreline might suggest that Kula were handy enough winners. I, I think the scoreline, you might say it's harsh on Ballyboden, but um, ultimately the scoreline is the scoreline. And if that's the score, then that's the score. And, Kula, to be fair, deserved their win. Absolutely, and I suppose uh, 
getting on to the game soon, but like, it was a real privilege being involved in commentary uh, with Dubs TV, especially when there's not as many allowed to the match and when you have to, when you're bringing the commentary to people with the pandemic. Yeah, and it's a responsibility, Paul. It really is because, as you've mentioned, you are among the lucky few who actually get to go into the game. And in Dublin, you'll be aware that this weekend the restrictions were even tighter than they were um, across the other counties. And you really want to bring as much of the atmosphere as you possibly can across the people. And I appreciate that the atmosphere is very different when there's no crowd. In, but there's still an atmosphere because the players bring in energy. Uh, there's an anticipation. There's uh, a nervousness and excitement. All of that is still there, even if no crowd is there. And you know people, even though they're not in the ground, you know they're feeling that at home. And like I've, um, I've been around a while now and I've been at a lot of county finals and uh, Ethan Stats the same, and Owen O'Donnell um, has played a lot of big games, and um, you know, you you do get that, you do feel the need to do a good job and to bring as much of the elements of the game that you can to the people at home and tell them about the stuff that's happening off camera, if that makes sense, because they're not seeing it and they're not there, and you want to tell them if it's cold, tell them if it's windy, tell them what you're hearing on the pitch because you'll hear it but it doesn't necessarily go into the microphones and um, it, it's it's a privilege and a responsibility to do commentary at this stage it's a privilege and responsibility to do commentary at any stage be it an all-ireland final or the first round of the club championship and you know something that i've done with dubs tv it's something that we did initially with dubs ga radio this whole thing started as a kind of a radio experiment and, it, and dubs radio started because I was doing it with my own club, my own Dublin club. I did it with my own home club as well. If you're from the country, you know yourself and you live in Dublin, you have a, a Dublin club and a country club. But um, it, it, uh, it, it was great to be involved and it was an honour to be involved as well. And it, look, it just so happened that we got two good games yesterday. So Finbar has won the B Championship. Congratulations to them. They actually beat Kula's B team in the final. But yeah, it, um, it's an honour that's not lost on me. And it's a responsibility that everyone on the team um, takes very seriously. Absolutely, and um, you mentioned there um, Sean Warren getting the goal, um, Kula coming back, uh, and it was one three to six points at the first water break. But um, when Ballyboden went up by six points, and Joe Forrest has mentioned it in his interview after the game, do you feel the difference was towards the end of the first half when they left one or, one or two scoring chances behind them? Yes, because Kula were always going to get a run on them. And they probably needed to build up a lead. And Joe Fortune, as you rightfully say, mentioned that in the interview he did with uh, Dubs TV. Joe Fortune, by the way, a fantastic manager, won a county title with Dub uh, Ballyboden in 2018, has won Leinster titles uh, at minor and under 21 grade with Dublin. Maybe could have got the senior job in the last couple of years. Hopefully will do in the future. I think he deserves it if he wants it. Um, but yeah, that, and that was the winning and losing of the game. But then again, at the end, when Conal Keeney got sent off and he was gone for, what, the final 10 minutes, like, it was, it was tough on, on, on Bally Bowden and they just, they just couldn't get the scores they needed and they have a very low score ratio. Sorry, I'm a bit, a bit distracted because I'm actually looking through the notes here from yesterday. We'll say, for example, like after the water break, Kuda really did struggle to score and Conal Keeney was sent off after 53 minutes and they got two more points afterwards. You know, and that was that. You know, you were never going to win a county final scoring only two points against a team who, who went on a, a run after that. And after Conal Keeney was sent off, Kula chipped over a few scores. They got one, two, three, four, five, five scores, I think. And um, it, you know, like their 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 ability to get into the scoring positions and to win the freeze and to take the right option. It looked to me like they were a team who were prepared for a storm and they have such experience, Kula, and it looked every bit of it yesterday. And that experience doesn't show itself necessarily in the first minute of the game. It shows itself in the last few minutes of the game. And we said it on commentary, Owen and I, yesterday, that really champion teams do it when it counts. You know, Saracens against Leinster on Saturday in the Champions Cup, they did it when it counts. The same as Kula in this game uh, against Bally Bowden. Yeah, and that's actually a good point you make because you need, you're saying like from all the sports, but 
the successful clubs are Ballyhales, the Kerfin, they can always just stick to that process and they'll find a way somehow to win, really. Well, it's, it's muscle memory. Um, they replicate what they do in training on the pitch. And you can see how well drilled Kula are. They were fantastic under Matty Kenny. Willie Maher has come in. He's now won two in a row. It's a pity that there is no AIB Leinster Club Championship because I'd love to see could Kula get their hands back on that, having been beaten by St Mullins last year. I think it would have been a very competitive championship, but look, the calendar doesn't allow it, and that's fair enough. Um, but like you look at the experience on that Kula team. David Tracy, quality, utter quality. Sean Moran, like all-star quality hurler and his goal yesterday from play was immense not the first one he got in the championship um Conor Callahan, even though he didn't get a whole pile of ball and the reason for that is because he was being tightly marked by James Madison uh, who's James Madden I beg your pardon who's one of the best man markers in the country um but even at that he worked incredibly hard there was no ego about him like Keanu Callahan at the back incredibly strong Darryl O'Connell originally from Kerry Abby Dorney has played for Kula in the last couple of years, has been part of that success of the two All-Irelands and all that. Really, really led from the front yesterday. Battled hard, didn't do anything too spectacular, but when he needed to win ball, he did. And he's their captain this year and he led by example. But what I really liked about this Kula team is that they, they execute the skills, but look, especially in the second half, at the amount of rook ball that they win, the amount of dirty ball that they win, the, the amount of times that Bally Bowden tried to get shots away and were just crowded out and this is a good belly Bowden team that they won't you know that they beat um but um but they were they were utterly fantastic and deserved their win and david heritage this year former kilkenny goalkeeper involved with kula could you see a sort of kilkenny influence on the school team yesterday i think any team that is physical and is skillful we say is kilkenny-esque because that's what kilkenny did better than anyone for a long long time and when they went on that four in a row run, that's what they did brilliantly. They matched the physicality. I mean, they were in the best possible way. And I don't mean in a cynical sense, they were vicious. They were hard, but they could also do the risky stuff. And that's what TJ Reid still does. And it's what Kilkenny in a large part still do. Others have kind of caught up with them. Tipperary now, last year in the All-Ireland final, we saw how physical they were. Incredibly skillful, but physical as well. You won't win hurling titles at the top grade unless you have that physicality in that age and Kula do look hardened and fit and you could see Herity's influence but to be honest they didn't do too much differently to what they had done under Matty yesterday now David and Willie came in and they've done a fantastic job to keep that going they deserve an awful lot of credit I don't care what kind of talent you have if you win a county title two in a row in Willie's case you are a good manager and David I think only came in this year but um, yeah you could see they weren't going to back down and they were really impressive. But look, we're, we're praising Kula. Sport is fickle. Had Bally Bowden not had Conlon Keeney sent off, had they not lost Simon Lambert, we might well be talking about them and you know the setup for a double because their footballers are in the county senior final next uh, next week. Conlon Keeney was probably the only forward in that Bally Bowden team who could make the ball stick up front. And he got that goal brilliantly, reacted to the penalty save. And even if he didn't win it cleanly, he kind of presented it for the likes of Niall Ryan to run onto, or perhaps Niall McMorrow or Luke McDwyer when he came in to run onto. And when they didn't have that ability to make it stick, Kula really were able to see it home. Yeah, and it can sometimes be talked about when a dominant club wins a club title, that it can be a negative for the county. Do you feel this is a negative for Dublin? No, Ireland? no, no. Excellence is never a negative. In the same way I would have said back in that four in a row run for Kilkenny, that's not a negative because they're the best out there. And if others can't match up to that, then that's the other's problem. And Kula are setting a bar and they're putting it up there for others to match. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing for Dublin Hurling. The fact that they won two All-Irelands, that's a good thing for Dublin Hurling. The fact that other clubs look at them and say, right, well, we want that kind of success. And Bally Bowden came so close. Um, and even a couple of years ago, in Crokes be my club here, Crokes beat Kula and it was such a big moment for that team to beat Kula of course then they went on and lost to Bally Bowden after a replay in the county fo final you know that's it's, it's, a, it's, it's a positive like it's probably bad for the conversation around the competition if one county or one club wins you know seven in a row or dominates but ultimately I, I don't think it's a bad thing to have a team like Kula setting the standard there and Bally Bowden came so close to them keep in mind um, and even in the semi-final, Nafina gave Kula a run for a while, but in that, again, final 10-15 minutes, Kula just got away from them. Um, 
or was it Bally Bowden played Nafina? Whoever, uh, I think it was Lucan actually, sorry, bigger pardon, played Kula in that semi final. But you know what I mean? Um, so that's not a bad thing. They're setting the standard. That's a good thing. And, like, you'd have to look at some games in the Championship. Uh, it'd have to be some sort of a positive. Nafina beating Kula in the final game, although it was kind of a dead rubber. Um, Vinton's uh, being comfortably defeated by Bally Gordon. Then, I suppose, Luke and Tarish is beating her own club. Kim McCord was probably the shock of the Championship. Yeah, it was a bit of a surprise, but the Cromies played incredibly well that day. And they are spectacularly good hurlers. McCaffrey played well as well, along with his brother Matthew. And there was a couple of other good performers on the day. Crokes didn't play particularly well, but they weren't let play well by Luke in that day. And credit to Luke for that. And as I say, Chris Crummy and Paul Crummy came up with two of the best performances I've seen in the club championship in the last couple of years. St. Vincent's, again, they have a great tradition. They have by far and away the most um, titles out of the teams you just mentioned. Falk still out in front by a long way, but it's, it has been a long time since they last won one at senior A grade. Um, but it has it has been an interesting championship, and 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 you mentioned it there. Like both Bally Bowden and and uh, Kula lost group games. Bally Bowden were absolutely battered by Kilmacock Croaks on, on the first day. Now Joe Fortune said afterwards they had some honest conversations, and the management took their responsibility, and the, the players took a share of the responsibility, and they bounced back really really well. And even watching it that day, like I was glad to see Kilmacock Croaks win, but that wasn't Bally Bowden. Like we knew that. We knew Bally Bowden were better than what they showed that day. I, I was excited by Croaks and their performance, but unfortunately they, they didn't really match it afterwards. Um, so yeah, like there's there's a nice spread of talent in Dublin and Cool are number one, but Bally Bowden aren't too far behind him. And who knows, some of those young players, Paddy Dunleavy, uh, McDwyer, Sean McDonald, guys like that, they'll have benefited from the experience of this year. Maybe some of the older guys will stay on. Like there's no reason why Keeney can't do it again next year. Simon Lambert the same, Durkin the same. Um, and they're they're not going to go go away. So it's it's a competitive landscape. Yeah, and looking at the Dublin Hurling scene, Sean Moore playing in the forwards for Kula, Chris Crummy playing in the forwards for Lucan. It probably gave Matty Kenny a bit of thinking. Yeah, and I think it's 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 all like Owen O'Donnell is another example. Owen O'Donnell is like an all star quality fullback, and he. He happens to be my co-commentator, so I'm biased towards him. But um, Owen O'Donnell played up top for Whitehall Column Hills at times in the last couple of years and was amazing. So I remember Kieran McGinney talking to me about various footballers that he was playing in various positions in Kildare. And he said, people are getting wrapped up in positions. A good player is a good player. Um, and I think it's very much the same. Chris Crummy, for me, probably an incredible halfback. And it's probably where you'd want him for Dublin. Um, but like, he's a good ball winner. And... He can plug a hole for you, and like Brian Whelan, Tommy Walsh, all these kind of guys proved that that you can be excellent in all sorts of positions. Tommy Walsh won an All Star in every every uh, line except for goalkeeper, and I'm sure if they stuck him between the sticks, he probably would have done well there as well. Um, Whelan the same excelled no matter where he was, centre forward, centre back, full forward, whatever. And and you've mentioned there that the, the Crumbies and Sean Moore and. They're just really good players and it's easier to play in different positions at club level if you're a county superstar as these guys are because they're just good hurlers and they're a cut above the majority of the players they're coming up against. It's somewhat more difficult at county but like it's certainly I'm sure given Matty Kenny food for thought and Matty must be very excited ahead of the new season um, because Dublin have some fine players. I don't, I don't think they've delivered on their talent in the last couple of years. That like The, the win against Galway was great last year even the year before under Pat Gilroy they were unlucky not to get out of the group but to lose to Leash it was a surprise to most of the hurling world it wasn't a surprise to me because I would have known that Leash group well I would know the work that Eddie Brennan and Al Corkin put in but um, that that was a real disappointment for Dublin that day and their wide count was was off the scales had they even scored one quarter of the shots they missed they, they might well have won that game so they're not as far away as people think, but they still have a bit to prove this Dublin team because they haven't reached the heights since they won that Leinster title in 2013 under Delo. Yeah, and I suppose uh, what people are wondering mainly now with the Intercounty resuming, will managers pick players on form? Is there any young players uh, throughout the championship that you might feel that Maddie Kenny could be calling into the squad? Um, I think you're probably going to see the same 
like Aidan Mellett now, for example, is around the Dublin squad. And he played well for Valley Bowden throughout the season. Two points from play yesterday. Really fast, really hard working. I'd like to see Niall Ryan get a goal. Um, I'm not sure if I class Niall as young. I'm not actually sure how old he is, but um, but he was he was excellent. Um, then you're probably going to see the same basis, the likes of um, Paul Ryan, Alan Nolan and goals, um, Keanu O'Callaghan. Darrow O'Connell, I think, has opted out for this year, which is a pity. I think if they can get him in, they possibly should. Um, David Tracy, Mark Schutte, again, I, I'm not sure what his situation is with the hurlers, but you know, he's a big physical man who can win balls. So. And Colin Keeney, if he, if he chooses to stay with the Dublin squad, again, because they were all involved with their club, I'm not sure who went back and who didn't and who was called in and who didn't. I don't think that, like, it's not like rugby where you declare a roster um, or, or soccer for that matter. But um, yeah, there's, there's a nice mix. There's certainly a nice mix. And it, it, it's an unusual season in a sense that you nearly can pick more off club form than you would have done before because for the first time, club runs nicely into county. So maybe there are players who stood up that managers might have, like in the past, a manager would see a player playing well in September, October. But then it's January, February before you start playing games. It's a long gap. Whereas now it's what, first weekend, like Halloween, I think is the first weekend of the championship. So there's a little bit of a shorter gap. But rarely does a manager see a player in the club game that he wouldn't have known of before. Um, so I don't know when we see too many bolters, but if we're going to see them, it will be this year, given the way the championship is. But the thing is, is because it's winter championship, it will be that bit slower. I think the players are going to have to be that bit more physical. Absolutely. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. But um, thanks, Manny, for your time, Mushy Manny. <laughs>